Hey guys, what's up? I am here to give you guys a recap on the new chapter of One Piece, which is on chapter 968. Now, I will tell you the truth, I would have loved to actually do this recap chapter on the night of Thursday or possibly yesterday, but I wasn't really sure of where certain rough English translations would be given, you know? And Honestly, like, um, just a little small announcement, I think I might try to do my One Piece chapter recaps to, on the, as, on Sundays or possibly Saturdays now, because, you know, we used to have a translator to, like, do the translations for us, but no longer, you know, because of other reasons. Well, understandable. But, okay, just a little, I know I did make an announcement about One Piece chapter recaps, but this is my um, somewhat small announcement before I start the recap. Anyways, I'm going to start the recap of One Piece's new chapter, so let's just begin. Might be a long one, so be prepared. So we had to it that the chapter opens up with, like, um, jur about Odin's journal, you know. The moment Roger's return from Laughdale came about, Red Hair asked him about some questions, and then he started to cry, you know. The world was actually in the, thrown into uproar and marines are freaking mobilizing very badly to go after him. And the newspaper says about Pirate King Goldie Rogers says he earned wealth, fame, power, the man who obtained everything. And we have to it that like um, Rogers upset about this because he said it's Gold, Gold D Roger, not freaking like, but it's Pirate King doesn't sound too bad. And why we now know why the government does that, you know? The reason they hide your name because of the the initial D, and we also see to it that the narration continues that the world began calling all things Raja had obtained with a certain name, the hidden one treasure, one piece. You know, and we see to it that a lot of pirates are going after like Roger to like um go after his ship and everything. You know, and that includes like Marines as well. We have to it that Roger talks to his crew and says, you know, come to think of it, everything is like a miracle. It's all thanks to you guys who are ready to throw your lives away. I have nothing but deep gratitude to all of you guys. And they go, oh, Captain, what are you saying now all of a sudden? It's embarrassing, you idiot. And we see to it that, like, um, that Roger it says, I'm going to declare it right here and now that the Roger Pirates are disbanded. And they go, like, what? And there's a, there's a voice given to Odin and Roger somehow. It says, he will be born. Our king will be born. He will be born in a faraway sea. The day when two kings meet again will also make the whales happy. We've been waiting for so long, just a little more. This time it will be okay. It will take about 10 years to be born. It will take about 10 to be born and 15 to grow up. And they go, like, who is it speaking in the seabed like this? And we had to it that, like, um, Roger asked Shirley, when do you think that little mermaid would be born? And Shirley says, 10 years. And we see to it that Roger says, the voice is apparently the truth that someone will be born and they will succeed us. We were so fast, the One Piece, who do you think will find it? And Roger's like, my son, of course. He goes like, no way. And we had to it that Roger says, from now on, let's get a good drink, go to a sea free of those marines. I get off first after that after that wish for Odin. And we see to it that Roger and Odin have a little small talk saying, I'll meet Whitebeard before I die. I'll send you back to Wano as well. And he says, No, that guy's that guy's always aboard that ship. Please take care of Whitey Chan. Oh <laughs> okay. And we see to it that like he said something to Rayleigh or something and Roger got off the ship. He got a medicine from Crocus and his disease was already in the late stages. So that means Roger is already at his limit. This disease and sickness that's inside his body is already rapidly d developing greatly and it's already killing Roger, you know? And we have to it that the narration continues by saying a man's farewell, no one must shed tears. The pirate kings who did not do not shed tears. But it's too late anyway because, you know, their captain, Roger, man, I mean, he's a he's a crazy guy. I mean, we all know about Roger and, and it's a it's a gift or a treasure to even see what Roger to see Roger in this chapter, you know? I mean, even in the backstory, little by little, you have to admit, we know only little information about Roger and how strong he is. Hell, we get to see how strong he is, but he clashed against Whitebeard, dude. Damn. Okay, enough of me going off. Um, the chapter continues with Odin having returned to Wano, and his wife is so happy to see him along with his children. They're going, oh, we missed you so much, and we see to it that 
Kinemon and the others go like, hey, welcome back, walking human garbage. He goes like, hey, where are your manners? You got no right to talk about manners here. And we see to it that there's some other stuff going on. Everyone at Kuri was actually very happy to see him back. And and Odin's like, I didn't expect a warm welcome. I thought they condemned my actions. But Kinemon says, it's all thanks to the gratitude of your wife, Lady Toki, you know. And we see to it that Kanjo also says, what an amazing person she is. Not letting... Minding her illness, every day she kept visiting this village and helping the villagers out. And Kawamatsu says, not minding your status as a Daimon's wife, she works as hard as everyone here. Also declare your name, she, she's, been, she's been telling the adventure and the hardships you went through, you know? Right now, Lady Toki and the kids are indisputably the most popular figures in Kuri. Since such a great person like her, it keeps praising you. And we see too that Inugarashi explains that there's no single person curious to think you're a bad person, you think you're bad of a selfish action anymore, or the action you take is never bad and never too selfish, you know. And he says, "Oh, thank you guys so much, you know." But we also see to it that like um, Odin asks about Dendro and Ashura Doji, you know. And we have to it that Nekomamushi explained that they went their own, their own, since one year ago. And we see too that Nekomamushi fills in the answer to Odin by saying, Ashra has been protecting this place from Kuri's Yakuza group and mountain bandits. Dendro is traveling from one place to another, borrowing funds for Kuri and returning them. And we had to it that Odin's like, yeah, so they have been protecting this place from bandits borrowing funds, huh? I see, it's nice to hear business is doing fine. But... But we also see to it that, like, Odin asks a serious question, or he gets to the serious topic. He goes like, I want, we have to, the Kinmon's like, we're going to tell you everything from the start. I mean, ever since you departed from this country, we somehow have maintained the administration of the Daimyo da, Kuri with the help of its people. And Odin was also told about his father, and Odin's like, yeah, it's what I was concerned about. My father's condition weren't, wasn't, weren't good. It's too bad I wasn't by his side when he passed away. But Kinmon says, yeah, but the main problem was the next successor for Shogun position. For a reason we couldn't understand, Suki, Sukiyama, Sukiyaki-sama appointed that Orochi. We get to, he, Odin also get to, the narration continues for Odin by saying, I was thrown into confusion after I heard their story. They said Orochi is like a little brother to me. I was only lending him money because he, he was bought up by Yasu-san. Not to mention that he never returned the money I gave to him. Even more surprising, he is one of those Kurozumi people. To think Kurozumi Orochi of all people was the one was the one appointed as my substitute. As the chapter continue on, Kinemon explained, "I'm sure you already saw weird people when you came here, right? In each village, several re- weapon factories have been built, and their job is to observe the villagers working in it. The men were forced to work there by Shogun's order. All they got was nothing but little earnings that they couldn't feed their families with." And Odin's like, what? Why did they listen to Orochi? And Raizo says, this is where it gets ugly. Because Kaido has his has his back, you know? And that strength, indeed, he's worthy of being called a monster. So Orochi's been using his power to, yes. And if people try to fight back, we have to it that, that, that Toki was trying to tell him not to tell him everything. But Odin says, no, tell me everything. Right here, right now. What's going on here? And Raizo decides to bring Momonosuke and Hiroi-sama outside, you know? And they end up explaining what happened when Odin was still on his voyage. Half a year ago, at the weapon factory, a man opposed the manual label given to him, and then he and his family were freaking executed by Orochi. Not only that, Kinemon also explained, under Orochi's continuous violence, we were at the end of our rope. We let our anger took over and began attack Orochi's Residents at the ca- capital flower, but Orochi made a secret move at the same time Kaido and his force were already at Kuri. They raided this castle. The target was to kill Momonosuke Sama, and, who is the next successor of the Kozuki clan. This upset, it, oh, this upset it Odin so much, but let's continue, okay? At the result, Kawamatsu and Inugarashi were defending the castle, had some sort of plan of escape. And we had to that Toki Sama was pierced by an enemy's arrow while defending the kids. Kinemon therefore apologized greatly by saying, Because we weren't thinking straight, Toki-sama was deeply wounded on her leg, and we put your family in great danger. We apologize for our mistake. Please forgive us. And Odin's like, Let me see that wound. Right now. Let me see. And we see too that Odin looks at the arrow wound that 
Toki had in her leg, and he and he got and his and his freaking rage. Oh man, dude, this is like beyond beyond angry. He goes like, "You protected our children, world. It must have hurt." And Toki's like, "Wait, Odin. If you get angry because such a thing, the enemy's counterattack." And Odin's like, "Such a thing, Toki. You never heard about the old tales about me, now have you?" I'm well aware of Orochi's method of things. You guys protect my family. Protect Kuri. And we have to it. Like, um... Although I don't understand all the details... All the confusing details... I got the gist of it. An idiot has taken control of Wano country. And they end up trying to stop Odin, but it's too late. This weak idiot is using the power of strong pirates. And by closing the country and preventing anyone bothersome to come in... He's about to turn this country into hell... And we see to it that Kaido's subordinates go that like, hey, Odin Kozuki is heading this way. And a lot of people say, like, hey, it's him. Will he be the legitimate successor? And we go to a scenery skip where, um, scene skip where Odin literally annihilated all of all of forces protecting Orochi. And Orochi's like, hey, this is bad. What are you doing here? And we have to it that, like, um... Orochi was already informed of what happened, and we have to it that Orochi stared at him in total anger and rage right now, holding two swords, and he goes like, Wait, Odin, son, I mean, think carefully. If you cut me down, I kind of won't stay quiet. Think about what happened to his country. But Odin does not care and says, First, I'll cut your butt down, and then think about it. And he's about to freaking cut Orochi, and he says, That's right, this guy is crazy, and the chapter ends off there. So, yeah, um, the first half of the chapter shows um, Odin and Roger talking with each other, and Roger's given the name Pirate King and Gold, D- Gold Roger instead of Gold D. Roger because his, his name of the initial, you know? His D initial name is something that they, they, they try to hide it with. And that's when Roger disbanded his crew, and he ends up taking separate ways, go meet Whitebeard, and you know, I'm pretty sure we all know what happened next afterwards. But... The second half of the chapter is where this gets really tense. Odin comes back to Wano country and was given all the information what's been going on in Wano. And apparently, freaking Orochi being a freaking jerk or a donkey's butt female dog or mongrel, he ends up turning the country into a hellish one and by all means, when Odin heard about his wife being hurt, and knowing what happened here and there, he became so filled with rage, he went to Orochi's castle and is trying to cut Orochi down. Like, literally, he's trying to cut him down completely. But I don't think it's going to be that simple at all. Guarantee. Guess we'll have to find out next chapter. I really hope it doesn't go on break, because the way how it ended right there is just wow, dude. So yeah, like I said, first half of chapter is involving Odin spending his final moments with Roger before he disbands the crew. Odin returns to Wano, finds out what the hell is going on, becomes so filled with rage. But not to mention the message. One of the messages in the in the chapter in this in the first half was very actually important because here's what it says. Like I said, I'll read it to you guys again. He will be born. Our king will be born. He will be born in the faraway sea. The day when the two kings meet again will also make the whales happy. We have been waiting for so long. Just a little more. This time it will be fine. It will take about 10 to be born and fit, and about 15 to grow up. And we have to it that, of course, Roger does ask Shirley, you know. The voice is apparently, apparently the truth that someone will be born and succeed us, you know. And I look forward to that. That message right there just shows that someone's going to succeed Roger. But who is it going to be? Guess we'll have to find out, right? So, yeah. Looking forward to um, looking forward to the next chapter. But anyways, like I said, that's one of the highlights of this chapter. That message right there that someone will be born and succeed the Gold D. Roger Pirates. Speaking of which, um, yeah, the second half. Oh, man. I'm pretty sure we're getting close to the end of the backstory, but hey man, I really love this backstory. It's really nice and awesome. Looking forward to more in the future, but I think we're already entering the final stages of the backstory of Odin Sama or Kozuki Odin. So yeah. <laughs> Oda man, you are one crazy guy, dude. 
you are one crazy guy. Looking forward to the next chapter. So until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm Alpha Zero. Have a good day. I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace out. Bye-bye. Toot-toot-toot!